Now let's imagine you are performing a simplified random dot motion test. At every time point, you can observe a moving dot whose velocity is randomly drawn from the same underlying distribution, which is the right Gaussian here. You are able to take as many uh, as many samples as you want, but your goal is to make fast and accurate estimation of which one of these two is the true data generating distribution. Now let's do some calculations in this special example to see what kind of process the accumulated evidence is undergoing. First, we assume p left and p right are both Gaussian distributions with different means and same variance. Without loss of generality, we let p right to be the true data generating distribution. Then each sample vn, which is the velocity of the moving dot, can be decomposed into a bias term and a scaled Gaussian noise variable with zero mean. If we plug this transformation into the formula of log likelihood ratio, the new evidence from this particular sample could be expressed with a deterministic term and a zero-centered stochastic term. The first term is called the drift term because without noise, the accumulated evidence will consistently drifting towards the positive direction under this term. The second term is called the diffusion term because it's zero-centered, so without drifting, there is equal probability to go left or right. Therefore, the SBRT with linear measurements of same variance can be expressed as a drift diffusion model. In our discrete example, this drift diffusion model is actually a random walk with drift. So we can use the results from a random walk. It can be shown that the mean and variance of accumulated evidence SN are both linear in the number of samples. In other words, the standard deviation is proportional to the square root of n, which makes the signal to noise ratio also proportional to the square root of n. This means that in this model, the more data you see, the more accurate decision you will make, which is consistent with uh, our intuition.